Welcome to today's stream. Where we'll be talking about uh, saying goodbye to a complex adaptive system. Uh, of course, goodbyes, whether it's to a friend uh, or a graduation or whatnot, of course, are it's uh, is uh, can be sad, but they're sad because the thing that you're saying goodbye to brought you happiness or brought you some degree of joy. Uh, and this complex adaptive system, which just happens to be sports betting, uh, did bring me some degree of value that I do wish I could keep in my life. Unfortunately, uh, the IRS and the, uh, the U.S. government have a different view, uh, which differs from much of the world, um, which makes it, uh, you know, as a rational actor, makes sports betting an irrational activity uh, because of the unfair tax treatment, uh, which we can definitely, or we will uh, most certainly get to at the end. Um, of course, you know, reach out to your representatives. Uh, just want to lay the seeds of that, but but of course you know, but why why am I uh, aggrieved to having to say goodbye to this uh, complex adaptive system? Uh, and so starting with what is a complex adaptive system and how sports betting fits into that. So a more formal definition of a complex adaptive system, right? A system made up of many individual parts or agents. Um, and then right the rest of his definition is that it's pretty much you know you can sum it up as those those agents and individuals right um their in their actions influences outcomes and because and right and so people perceive those different outcomes and then they adjust behavior uh, and so it's a it's a, uh, a virtuous cycle right where there's inputs and outputs uh, and so people adjust their uh, their actions which then changes the inputs which then changes the outputs in a never ending cycle uh, and so the same uh, and so again, like you can think of it, especially in the context of say financial markets, is probably one of the more visceral uh, reactions where it happens. Where, for example, of course, you know you have a range of individual participants, of course, from high frequency traders to institutional investors, and within that right ETF, uh, long term capital versus say long short funds. So of course retail, um, right? So you have a lot of different participants with different incentives. And they have all different inputs as to what like sectors they allocate capital to. Are they more prone to sell or buy? Are they you know, just a market neutral market maker? And of course, the outputs are the outputs, right? Uh, of you know supply and demand for different securities and the fundamental uh, this values, whether it's you know a discounted future cash flows or or whatnot, that creates you know your complex adaptive system that keeps on changing um, as there's new inputs, right, and outputs, and participants change. Um, so it's a virtuous cycle that's very interesting and, you know, is the backbone of, uh, to uh, arguably a significant degree, you know, how the world, uh, why the world is the way it is. Um, if I may use the good old interview question, why are you interested in finance? To which you can say, it's how roads and bridges get built. And also why uh, football clubs or soccer clubs are, are being bought. Um, right, but it's a complex adaptive system. Uh, because of right participants and the range of outcomes and how they influence one another. And so just at a conceptual level, like it's, it, I think it's at least conceptually interesting, if not interesting itself to be able to be a participant in a complex adaptive system, right? The fact that you can open a brokerage account uh, and then be, be literally be part of a complex adaptive system, no matter how marginal, um, I, I think is, uh, quite quite interesting, right? As you you literally you know help perform, you help provide liquidity to the plumbing of the market. You help price discovery, right? That's that, I think just conceptually like that's fun. Like you're you're part you're participating in in a, a bigger thing, right? You're contributing to the wisdom of the masses, uh, which we can talk to in the context of uh, prediction markets like Kaohsiung. That might be a very <laughs> that might be a very uh, Chinese pronunciation to say Kaohsiung. Although I, I really can't think of how else you would say cow, cow, she, maybe, but cow, sure, I'll just say, right? But cow, sure is a prediction market. And as we can see here, you can predict on um, and pull up a live view, right? So I can, you can predict, you know, open eye board members that will leave, unemployment rates, approval ratings for Biden, uh, and a range of, you know, niche events to more, you know, mainstream, right? Like what's the uh, S, SP, S, SPXs? Uh, range for the year, um, right? And of course, the wisdom of masses does need the uh, the clarification, right? That it's not so much that like just having like 
everybody's or to make their prediction it's going to get you the best outcome I, I think most people would say that there needs to be like an asterisk where it needs to be people who have uh some degree of skin in the game not necessarily experts for one that's a bit elitist uh but second it's um it kind of limits the point then of calling it wisdom of the masses but i think the point is uh it needs to be wisdom of the masses of people who have some degree of skin in the game. It doesn't have to be a lot, but I think, and I think you know, we can all probably attest to it in our uh, personal lives, right? Just like the the, the simple mental, uh, like brain twitch that happens. Like even it's as small as like fifty cents. That's like just fifty cents online. Like that changes like the degree to which we think about something. Um, I think the same applies for prediction markets and, of course, then other complex adaptive systems such as, you know, financial markets or the overarching point of this video, which is that sports betting is also a complex adaptive system. And, and as someone who thinks that complex adaptive systems are not only fun to be able to participate in, but also are analytically stimulating and engaging, well, then it's, so sports betting is a, a wonderful complex adaptive system I like to participate in. And it's a real disappointing shame that the uh, United States' tax treatment of sports betting, which is very distinct to say our, uh, our northern neighbors in Canada or in many countries around the world, um, which has deprived me of this wonderful complex adaptive system that I cannot or rationally cannot participate in. Uh, but again, back to the wisdom of massive at Kalsher, uh, Right again, like having skin in the game. Uh, Calcio specifically, right, means that the outcomes are much more likely to be accurate. And the Financial Times had a had a nice article um, that talked about these prediction markets. How the you know they are actually pretty pretty accurate and pretty good at, at uh, you know pricing in the outcomes and making you know and uh, pricing in uh, the actual outcomes or have a pretty good track record. Uh, which I think does go to show right, wisdom of masses um, that have skin in the game, which I think makes the theorem stand on its own legs. Uh, so I personally haven't messed around too much with Kasher yet. I, I, I think part of it's, you know, like, at certain point, like, if you look here, right, like, open I have board members that'll leave. Like, it's pretty clear that Helen Toner is one of them who's getting kicked out, and it seems pretty sure that. Adam is staying on. I, I guess that might be a that might be a fun. I have not actually made a. Maybe maybe I should do that stream, but no, I have to do a bit more due diligence before I uh, participate in that complex. But I I, I, I should say I, I do focus on complex adaptive system as right being like wide range of participants, um, that have which are provide the inputs. That then influence the outputs, and the outputs then influence the participants, who then change their inputs, and so it's a virtuous cycle. I, I do make the point in the piece that that I I wouldn't necessarily consider a prediction market uh, a complex adaptive system because like a platform like Kalsher, um, of course, ignoring the fact that like, they're pretty niche platforms, but many participants, so it meets that first criteria. But I don't think that the the prediction market itself prices in the outcome. Uh, it is a bit, which is arguably a bit more philosophical question. But let's let's say, right? But we can just take this example of like, you know, what is the S P five hundred's yearly range? And so, uh, pr people, you know, say buying contracts for forty two cents to price the S and P's range from forty five hundred to forty nine hundred. So they're, they're providing an input, but that input doesn't actually affect uh, the S and P's actual yearly range. Of course, I mean, literally it doesn't because it's not capital, but that's inflows or outflows. Um, but it's, it's like a, like the, it's a, like a separate system. Whereas, you know, like, uh, of course, financial markets, right, um, you are affecting the outcome. Sports betting, you are affecting the outcome by affecting the odds to some degree. So I want to consider caution to be like a prediction market, but still it's like the core analytical tick that's going on, right, is you're seeing what the market's pricing. And you're deciding, do you agree or disagree with what's being priced or what the market's saying? And then you get to decide how you want to act in response to that, um, right? And so, like, to use a sort of financial security example to make it concrete, right? So we can say, right, security, stocks, they trade at certain valuations, whatever you want to use, EBITDA, price to earnings, price to book, 
whatever your whatever your uh, whatever floats your boat. How's the state of market is pricing a security at 50 times? And then you get to decide, well, is the market overvaluing that security, uh, undervaluing it? And then you get to decide, uh, or is it fairly valued? And then you get to decide how you want to react to that. Do you want to allocate capital to it? Do you want to short it? You just want to, you know, sit out and miss out on potential gains or potential losses, right? You get to decide. And so, or again, like say a company's bringing like 0.5 times book value, then you get to decide how you want to react to that. And I, I just think that's an, an incredibly, I don't want to say fun, but it's incredibly uh, like stimulating thing to do. And it's also something that we all do implicitly. Uh, regardless of whether or not if we have a, a brokerage account, right? Uh, you decide if you want to steal a piece of candy from the store, then you, you know you, you implicitly, when you're thinking about this, that decision, you're, you're deciding what is my upside? How much do I value getting that piece of candy, whether it's the dollar value, whether it's you know, whatever uh, utility function, if I, if I am to use that economics uh, 101 concept. Or you, you think about what is your utility upside or downside from not taking that candy how much do you are you missing out on and then of course you get to you know, apply your neutral state of like uh how much is the agony if not knowing if you can get away with it right but again implicitly in everyday life right you're like if you're going to turn left or right are you going to turn right on a red light is there a cop right you're, you're implicitly pricing it like like the market in that case the life the universe the planet the, the city the country the jurisdiction is providing is pricing the outcome of an event to you like like, like tax avoidance literally is kind of like you know like you, you know how much do you price in you know the irs versus your your conscience and whatnot um so i think this this uh, mental muscle that is uh the muscle that's being ticked when you think about complex adaptive systems is a muscle that we all use in everyday life uh and so i think you know it's, it's nice to be able to uh, you know, work that muscle, you, you know, and just, you know, apply it. And it's fun to apply it and interesting to apply it in financial markets. And it's also interesting to apply it in, uh, in sports markets, right? It shouldn't be Nicaragua. It should be a Honduras, but I, I failed to, to fact check myself. Uh, but let, let's say Nicaragua, right, at home is at 10.5 odds. So being the, uh, the reasonably intelligent sports better that we are, we don't use American odds because that doesn't really tell us much about probabilities per se. Instead, we use decimal odds. And if I'm using decimal, I can do one divided by the odds of the outcome. So one divided by 10.5. Let's say that gets me about 9%. So that's saying that Nicaragua has a 9% chance to win versus Mexico. And Mexico, one divided by 1.65 has, let's say, a 70% chance of winning. And so you, as the participant, you get to decide, are those odds fairly priced, you got to decide, does Nicaragua really only have a 9% chance to win? Does Mexico really have a 70% chance to win? Of course, there's variance. So of course, we're like taking, you know, roughly, you know, the averages of different outcomes, but do you agree with that implicit pricing? And then you get to decide how do you want to react to it? Of course, there's, a, you know, the odds for a tie, you know, if you can do, you know, various different outcomes, but you're applying the same muscle rate of, uh, you're taking, you're, you're seeing what the market's pricing and you're deciding how you want to react to what the market's pricing. Uh, which I think is you know, just uh, like intellectually interesting. Uh, of course, in this case, the event of Honduras versus Mexico from the first leg, you know, Nicar uh, Honduras did beat Mexico 2-0, um, and you it would have had a decent payoff. Um, although, of course, although again, it's not so much the payoff. I, I don't. Like, I, I make the point. It's not so much like the dollar values. I mean, the dollar values are helpful in the same way, like there's skin in the game, and it's it's a, it's a the same way like you're leveling up in a video game, right? It's it's satisfying to see your level increase, and for sports betting, it's uh, uh it's it's good to just good to have a tangible reminder that uh, that you are making positive weighted average uh, to the size of the dollar value of your bet, uh, increasing your your uh, your balance. Of course, I guess into the IRS and tax treatment, which we'll get to at the end. But but again, so so recapping, you know, complex adaptive systems. You know, life is a complex adaptive system, and so are financial markets, and so is sports betting. And I think it's it's like first of all, it's just like 
conceptually like awe inspiring to a degree to be able to be a participant for zero transaction cost, roughly speaking, to participate in complex adaptive systems. And it's it's a muscle we all do. And so if we it's a if we all do it, then you know I think it's fair enough to just apply it in more areas uh, that you can. Another benefit that I didn't include is that it was pretty nice to learn uh, to learn more geography uh, through uh, through sports betting. I mainly just did uh, did soccer. Of course, soccer is probably one is the most international sport, fought in different you know leagues and different countries and whatnot. But even you know, in the U.S. domestically, um, I'm sure college football. I, I'm sure you know, it's, you know plenty of schools <laughs> outside the SEC and. Uh, and the the late Pac-12 and, and whatnot, right? But I don't know. There's something nice about you know reading about uh doing just reading you know uh French third tier football in a, a national league and you know reading about you know like a Red Star versus like Auxerre to you know second tier um uh like Bordeaux to of course you know like uh you know, Chinese CSL second tier uh. Argentina, you know, Turkey, you know, Ukraine, the, the Nordics, the Levant, the, the Orient, blah, blah, right? Like, it's, it's, of course, there's a, you know, a nice geography benefit, right? But again, you know, which, which does, which does tick an itch. But the bigger thing, right, it's, it's just fun to be part of complex adaptive systems. And I, I think at the very, and regardless of your opinion on the sports betting aspect, I think it is a, uh, the big our over, overarching takeaway should be that you know complex adaptive systems are things that we interact with, and I, I think um, implicitly or explicitly, like you should recognize that. And with that, then you can just find other areas which just happen to be complex adaptive systems. Um, and I, I think it's you know awe inspiring to be able to be a part of those systems. And, and the last reason that I think sports betting did take an itch was the same way that like it is competitive and it, again back to like you know being able to see progress and be able to know that you're having progress um it, it does take that competitive itch right this quote from hedge fund manager paul Tudor jones you know like as much as it's a cliche to use a, these sports analogies in general and especially to use a sports betting analogy when talking about sports betting um but to some degree you need to have love love of the game right um and so, I guess at a certain point, right, it becomes irrational to be, make even more money past a certain point. Like, if you are a billionaire, then, you know, like your utility function, right, of your diminishing returns, right, you're probably at some point close to hitting that, that uh, tangency point. Um, where then it becomes irrational to keep on working. Um, so, and why do you keep some people, like, why does, uh, like, Buffett keep on working? Or like Musk keep on working well, it's probably because you know like they have an implicit love of what they do. You know Buffett, you know he can't help himself, but he has to look at you know like the pricing of uh, certain financial assets, whether it's you know like uh, state road bonds or or uh, or uh, various public securities, right? Like say Chevron. Um, you just have to have that intrinsic itch, and again, right, it's a degree that the the itch is you know being able to be part of a complex adaptive system. And so maybe it's just a recognition that, you know, everything in life is a complex, or life itself is a complex adaptive system. And so it's um, it's, it's an addiction because it's, it's what you interact with every day. Uh, but, but again, I think that's more of an implicit thing, right? And if, maybe, maybe I'm being a bit facetious by not including the, the financial aspect, uh, which does tie in nicely then to, to why I don't, of course, implicitly, I don't think that uh, the reason I do sports betting is... Um, <laughs> It's certainly not a, a source of income I, I underwrite myself to, but um, again, for all the, the previous reasons, so the intrinsic, you know, love of, and enjoyment from being part of, you know, a complex adaptive system and applying and, you know, reckon, and seeing like if my analysis was correct or incorrect. But it ties in nicely down to the United States' negative and punitive and regressive treatment of uh, sports betting. As we can see from this wonderful IRS website, right? The IRS requires, it doesn't say it super explicitly, which isn't the best, but gambling is fully taxable, which implies, and it is, um, gambling is taxed on your net, on your gross, not your net. 
right? Financial assets, right? Like stocks, right? All right, it's your net that you report, but for betting, it's your your gross. Which of course it would be nice if the IRS on the website uh, <laughs> would explicitly say gross instead of playing facetious uh, facetious word games about it. Uh, but also it's, it's a bit baffling because you know how come the wonderful Canadians who do plenty of uh, weird peculiarities not tax betting? How come all of these wonderful jurisdictions have no tax on gambling winnings? And so, for one hand, it's just a, just implicitly, it's a bit funny where you know the IRS requires you to report the income on your tax return. So just by definition, you are asking pe the people who gamble or sports bet again two different things. I, I would argue uh, again, especially if you're using the the complex adaptive system mindset. But you are asking gamblers to self-report. Uh, your tax income. And so if you think about your, your Venn diagram of people who accurately <laughs> report their income and you know what you think your average better is, I don't think that Venn diagram is very much uh, overlapping. So so explicitly like like the the game set up by the IRS is kind of busted in that sense. Um, you know it's like you know, the joke in this uh, the joke is like you know can an idiot uh, Find a way to break this machine. Can an idiot successfully run this company? Um, and that's the uh, implication of like how like resilient your system is. Well, it's pretty clear that you know just on the face of it, uh, the U.S. tax treatment of gambling is um, is not one that stands up to much scrutiny. And it's almost like there's a quid pro, or there's like an implied quid pro quo, where it's like there's universal acceptance that you can not report just for your net. Um, which is a bit baffling, and of course, for people like me who, who when it comes to the IRS, you know, my, my utility functions of uh, going against the IRS maybe is a bit more uh, steep. I have a much more sensitivity to loss, uh, loss avoidance than uh, the numbers, which, which has scared me out of it uh, clearly. Dude, to me, not no longer a sports betting option. Just bite the bullet this year uh, and just move on. Um, but again, I, it's I think it's fundamentally. Like fundamentally, it's a bit weird where, like, a it goes against all the other intuition um, that people would have from like stocks, where it's your net versus this is treated differently. Um, and also then you know the fact that these other jurisdictions don't have a don't tax it, uh, which is interesting. Right, Canada, no tax. Right, and so, so for me, it's a combination of jurisdictions, which I think have a bit more rational tax treatment, where they put the tax burden on the sports book itself versus the better. And I, I think that makes sense, right? Because the sports book has wonderful accountants, has, you know, corporate finance team, has the accounting team, has tax lawyers who will accurately uh, report and pay taxes. But your average better, again, back to the Venn diagram, probably isn't. So if you actually want your tax incidents to be effective, if you actually want to collect taxes from betting to, in order to generate revenue, that you can apply to all of the wonderful positive externalities of tax revenue from, from uh, gambling addiction to, to building roads and bridges, um, right? then you'd actually want to collect, <laughs> collect the tax. Uh, right? Because again, right, most state budgets, right? State, states, uh, uh, most states aren't allowed to run deficits per se. So you actually watch your, uh, but of course, right, this is like a federal issue, not so much a state issue per se. Huh. Which I suppose that might be part of the issue. But again, so the point is like the tax incidents, like it's just not a smart system for taxing. Uh, again, I'm happy to hear the other side. Of course, I, of course, you know, I, don't, I, I do have skin in the game on this issue per se. I have read my Congress people about this because um, like it's a very visceral issue. That the Tax Cut and Jobs Act has affected with the uh, standard deduction change, and um, it, it's it's a bit baffling from someone who's taken a couple, you know, like econ and public policy class of like, you know, like the, like the utility comes from the tax incidents from collecting the tax, and yet the way the sports betting system is set up, like your tax instance incidence is is is, is applied on people where it's not going to have any salience, or it's not going to have any uh, derived utility from taxing, you know, the better who won't report it. So it's a bit baffling. And, then you just, and again, it's 
I, I'm not so convinced by like, you know, oh, like if you remove the gross tax, you're going to encourage like gambling issues. Cause I, I think right, if you have the way it is right now, it, it kind of incentivizes you to maybe like purposely rack up more losses. So you can have more than 13,000 losses. So you can actually, um, it's worthwhile to you to standard or to itemize your taxes, your ta- uh, itemize your deductions in order to get the, the write offs on the sports betting. Um, so I'm not very convinced by that. And then secondly, like to the degree of the sports books would oppose it, I, it just makes the sports books last, you know, much more rational, right? The goal of a sports book is to um, have, as you're speaking, is have customers place more bets that happen to be parlays, which have lower uh, likelihoods of paying out. Um, or you see is like increased, it's not gross market value or like, uh, but so basically, you know, increased like transaction volume and all that. And so if if it's not taxed at all, then let's, then uh, yippee kaye, let's let's go home, let's go, it's a fun time, you know. So, so again, it's just a bit baffling to me as to why like the tax incidence is so hilariously uh, misplaced. And again, clearly, all of these other countries uh, have figured it out. You know, UK, Romania, Sweden. Right, I say these are you know, relatively speaking, you know, pretty well, decently run countries, which have, you know, decent. Um, economists and whatnot and so i'm just a bit baffled at how the u.s has managed to to, to fumble um the tax treatment of it and of course I, I think this is a pretty funny joke but of course uh the united states right has a puritan origins thanks to the to the, the mayflower and and the pilgrims uh and of course which, which does rear its head in many places, one of which, of course, I, I think is the, you, know, you could say prohibition, you can say uh, treatment of gambling writ large with casinos, you know, being being more like, you know, Native American reservation things versus like mainstream. And so in this case, where it's very visceral of uh, the tax inefficient treatment, the, the low tax incidence of sports betting, right, is the legacy of the Puritan origins, which only tells me that once again, the the British were right to chase them out, get them out. Why do the Brits have this issue of uh, inefficient tax incidents? Clearly not. Uh, but yet the U.S. does. So once again, you know, they were right to chase the Puritans out, uh, which is of course tongue in cheek. Uh, but in that, in the you know, the Puritans and their legacies, uh, a, a different. A different discussion topic but but is so again i would certainly encourage you to write your congressperson about it if only to just get them on the record but also because you know it's I, just implicitly like implicitly like to just make it like a econ, uh, economist perspective like the tax incidence is inefficiently applied it should be on a sports book or it should not be on the better who is not going to report and it's certainly like it's certainly unfair to report your gross and it feels that it's it's only going to feel that way to most people. And so you perform it like your net, perform it to not at all. But the point is, like, it's, it's from your tax incidence perspective, it's inefficient. Uh, right? Because your sports book doesn't automatically withhold in 99% of cases. So you're not getting the tax revenue unless the person's reporting it. Uh, but if not reporting it, then you're not getting any revenue. So you may as well, so you're, you're kind of not getting the benefit. Um, and then secondly, like it's also like for progressive reasons, right? Like lower income folks are probably the more vulnerable, right? Because like the sports books under advertisements, they don't advertise come bet with us because you get to report your gross winnings and not your net or not at all. They don't they don't happen to mention that the implied tax consequences, which affects your AGI, which can affect your access to, to federal benefits, to health care, um, and all that. So it's a progressive issue. It's the right like low or high vulnerability communities. Um, and yeah, so I, yeah, so again, write your congressperson about it. So it's it's going to be an issue, right? More states are going to legalize betting. And, you know, at a certain point, it's, it's either every, we're going to see a lot of different uh, uh, audits come out, or we're going to reform the system and reform it to something that makes more sense, like all of these fine countries over here. But again, at the, but that's a bit of a sideshow, right? And at the end of the day, right, sports betting is a complex adaptive system, and life is a complex adaptive system. Financial markets are complex adaptive systems, and it's fun. I think 
intrinsically rewarding to be able to be a part of a complex ecosystem. Well, not only from the fact that you are contributing to the system itself, but also from the fact that you get to see a clear sign of personal development. How you learn more, you see your outcome of decisions. You say, well, why didn't it work out? And then you get to make adjustments and see improve your outcome, uh, so, which is just, again, fundamentally interesting um, and I think rewarding to be a part of, especially when the transaction costs of doing so are quite minimal. Of course, excluding the you know the the punitive tax cost or tax treatment of sports betting. But um, what do I know? But again, write your congressperson. <laughs> Join me in writing your congressperson and the Biden administration and uh, whatnot about this. But thank you for listening. Uh, and uh, but again, yeah, definitely. Uh, but again, let me let me know in the comments about wrong, or if you want a referral code or whatnot, happy to help. But again, it's, it's fun to be part of complex data systems. At the very least. Applying that framework, I think, to more areas of life, I think, is uh, is the one that can help a lot with aligning incentives and just just understanding, uh, reviewing things a bit more of an analytical sense. Because we all do it, so we may as well, you know, verbalize it. Thank you for watching.